Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Honrado, and I work here at Cabi High uh, as a data engineer. And we are going to talk about uh, a problem that Jesus already mentioned, which is the, uh, classical, the classical approach to machine learning. Uh, as he said, uh, it doesn't scale. So uh, we are going to talk about how we at Cabify uh, did solve that, that problem. Uh, but first, uh, um, I'm sure that probably not all of you are familiar with some terms, some machine learning terms. I wanted to give a brief uh, explanation of two of the concepts that we are going to use a lot in this presentation, which are uh, feature and model. A feature in the uh, machine learning context is an, an individual measurable property of a phenomenon being observed, which uh, is kind of weird. Maybe you don't understand that definition. But uh, let's see some examples. Uh, for instance, in the in Cabify business, uh, a simple feature could be the number of drop-offs, uh, the number of rides that a user performs with us. Another feature could be uh, the late, sorry, the date of the first or the last drop-off of a user, or maybe the user language, uh, the user country. Uh, those are features. And feature, uh, features are used uh, as input for machine learning models. A machine learning model uh, is, uh, by the way, this definition uh, are started from Wikipedia. Uh, it's a mathematical model uh, built using some machine learning algorithm that uh, takes some sample data as input. Uh, what we obtain is something that is able to make prediction or decision with, without having been uh, programmed to do specifically so. so the algorithm learns about the sample you give to, to it. Uh, he's able to extract the common patterns, so he will infer what output uh, it should uh, return for uh, any input that, that he uh, received. So some example of a, a machine learning model is uh, one that uh, could predict the probability of a user ordering a Cabify again. So if we have the historic data, the, all the drop-off of that user and the date of the last drop-off, for example, um, maybe uh, another feature, uh, another additional feature, uh, we call uh, build a simple model that will be, give us a probability of, of that. So this sounds familiar, right? <laughs> it's from the previous presentation. It's the same case, so I, I, I'm not going to uh, dedicate much time. Is the same. Aristotle here, the data scientist, has, a, 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 has implemented a machine learning in Python. Um, he needs to put the model in production so he, it can start adding value to, to, the, to the company, which usually translates to money. So he needs to hand over the, the model to, in this case, Deb, the, the developer. The problem is that production environment uh, is written in Ruby. So they need to rewrite the model. So it's the same problem that Jesus just uh, described. So, uh, and also as Jesus described, this doesn't scale because uh, it could take months from idea to having a model in, in production. So we thought we need to build something. We need to build some machine that help us to uh, like, uh, Next machine, uh, sorry, uh, take uh, machine learning at Cabify to the next level, so we uh, don't take uh, so much time. So this is the ideal scenario in which we have some machine, and we have Aristotle here, there in the uh, in the uh, first step of the of the change. So we need something uh, and some contract between the data science and the machine, so uh, the, the data scientist could send some packages to the machine, and, and the machine will take care of all the heavy operations, like training the model, uh, evaluating, evaluating the model, uh, computing features, um, deploying the models to, to production. So at the end of the chain, we have uh, models in, in production. So those were uh, the main objective that we had when, when we uh, started uh, designing Likeo. The first of all, I already mentioned it, which is autonomy. We need something that uh, uh, gives uh, to the data scientists the power to productionize machine learning models without uh, not a single engineer intervening in the, in the process. Uh, scalability. 
uh, we need to uh, make sure that the platform that we build is able to uh, handle dozens or even hundreds of, of models and features. Then we need uh, traceability and debugability. Uh, for instance, we need to uh, make sure that uh, if uh, given a model, we need to make sure that we know the data, the SAT data and the SAT code that was used to train that model. Uh, that's useful to find bugs or, or uh, understand how model uh, work. And then we need a typical problem in uh, data scientists, which is facing the gap between the data used for, used for training and the data used uh, for predicting. So we fix that uh, indication by using, or better put, by reusing the same features. Okay, so we have even a name for the platform, Likeion. Um, so let's see a general overview of it. Don't worry, there are many boxes and we will, see, we will explain a bit uh, in the next uh, slides. From this uh, slide, I want you to take that uh, our infrastructure uh, lives in Google Cloud. So we use a lot of products from Google. For instance, Bitable, BigQuery, Google uh, Cloud Data Flow, uh, Composer, which is the managed version of, of Airflow, uh, and the Kubernetes engine, where all our services uh, run. So let's start talking about features. We are going to talk about the architecture that we just saw, the contracts that data scientists uh, must follow, the computation of the feature, and how we are going to serve them in production. So here's uh, the, the architecture of the features uh, within the Cajun. The core piece of this architecture is the feature manifest. In that, uh, in this is a pretty uh, simple repository where we store the specification of the features in plain text. We will see a, a sample later. Uh, that, uh, there is a contract that uh, data scientists should follow. We will see it later. Uh, from, from that repository, we index all the features in a search engine, which is useful because we can have feature discoverability, very important because we have a team of several data scientists. We don't want them to build the same again and again. So uh, that's a way that they can reuse features to compute uh, new features. Then uh, we have the feature generation uh, process, which is orchestrated by Airflow. And we use uh, Apache Bean jobs running in Google Cloud Data Flow that uh, compute the features and store them in the two storages that we see. Cloud Big Table, our operational database that uh, is a low latency, highly scalable uh, database uh, managed by, by Google. Uh, that's the database that we use to expose feature to other teams. So other teams can query features in real time in a matter of milliseconds. Then uh, we also uh, store the features in BigQuery, uh, which is a data warehouse solution from, from Google, is where uh, Cabify Data Warehouse uh, is located. So everything, every data that Cabify generates internally or externally is located at BigQuery. So the features uh, are stored there too, and that uh, data scientists are able to uh, run queries, answer questions, perform uh, experiments, and we use with BigQuery also as the source to train uh, models. So here is an example of a feature, what we call a feature manifest, which is the specification on a feature. We have some metadata, the name, the description, some tags to search the feature. Uh, but I want you to take from here two important things, uh, the two uh, things that are highlighted in, in light green. In this uh, particular query, we are uh, using the uh, query method. We are computing this feature using an SQL query to our data warehouse. Um, another thing to notice here, uh, well, you can, you can check the query, uh, are uh, simplified, uh, the real ones are too complex. Um, we have also the ability to uh, choose the access pattern for those features in our production, uh, sorry, our operational storage. So in this case, uh, we have two access patterns. One of them 
in one of them we store the features by day so we have historic uh, an historic of 30 days and we have another access pattern which is uh, the latest value of the features many many clients of uh, Likeion uh, just mm, care about the latest version of the feature. So we provide uh, both uh, access patterns. Um, you can see uh, also uh, underlined some uh, words in the upper side. You, you see uh, the columns that the query uh, will return. And in the bottom, you will see macros. Uh, what we what we use uh, what we uh, do with those macros is uh, give the data scientists the power to uh, choose the key of each record in the table uh, using the value of the columns. So they can uh, basically um, decide and build every access pattern that they need. So here is a sample of. Uh, Airflow generation process is uh, simplified with uh, only uh, five features. This graph is built within the feature manifest. So we take, we take into account the dependencies between features. So you can see here that we have kind of two layers. Uh, the layer of the right depends on the feature uh, in the layer of the, of the left. Uh, and here uh, we have a feature that is called rider dot product rank. Uh, remember that name because we are going to talk about uh, later on. So here's a detail of an Apache Bean job running in uh, Google Dataflow, uh, which is computing a single feature. It's pretty simple because uh, it's kind of a ETL. We extract the, the data from the data warehouse in the first step. Uh, we prepare the, the feature, which is uh, basically adding some additional metadata, and then we store the features in both storages, uh, BigQuery and Bigtable. So once the features are located in Bigtable, uh, we can serve them to other teams. So we do that with a simple API that we developed uh, using the uh, GraphQL flavor. Uh, here is a simple example of requesting a couple of features. In this case, drop of count, eight real features that we use uh, for a specific user ID. Um, the server is returning the, the feature values in a matter of uh, some milliseconds. So many teams are using this to, to extract some uh, data that they cannot compute uh, using just production uh, data. Okay, let's switch to the other part of the architecture, which is uh, machine learning models. Um, we are going to talk about, again, uh, uh, about architecture, contracts, the workflow that data scientists should follow to uh, interact with that machine that we saw, and also the serving part, pretty similar to uh, the one that we uh, recently uh, explained. So uh, this is the architecture for the models. Uh, we have a centerpiece, which is the model repository. Uh, that is the source of truth for models. We store the specification of the model. Uh, we store the state of the model. A model can be created, can be uh, in the state of being trained, uh, being uh, trained, effectively trained. Uh, it could be deployed or ready to be deployed to production. So the state is stored uh, there. Once the models are trained, we also store the binaries in the model storage, which, are, which is a blob storage. Um, then we have a couple of more APIs or services. We have the model management API, which is in charge of uh, scheduling uh, the deployment of uh, each one of the models. The models are deployed uh, as a standalone service, as a microservice. The model uh, uh, it's simply the model wrapped into a Flask uh, web server and put it, uh, uh, wrap it again into a token container and runs in, in Kubernetes. And we have the model serving API, which is uh, basically a proxy between our clients and the models that are running in, in our cluster. So a couple of basic concepts uh, about uh, Likeion models. Um, we have like three main attributes that model could have or must have uh, uh, in Likeion. 
The first one is the family, the family of the model, which is basically the name of the model. Then we have the segment. Uh, this can be optional. Uh, it's very typical in, uh, to have, uh, in data science to have uh, a different model per country, per language, in our case, per region, where we operate. And then we have the version, following uh, semantic versioning. Uh, an important thing to notice is that a version of a model changes when the data used to train it changes or when the code changes. So we can have traceability. So what do we use as contracts? What do we, sorry, what data scientists should provide as, uh, to that machine as input? Uh, we needed a contract. Uh, in fact, we started designing our own contract, but uh, we, we found MLflow, which is an, an open source framework that uh, cover mostly all the life cycle, all the machine learning life cycle, and offers uh, three products that we use. So the first one is MLflow project, which is basically a standard way of uh, defining a machine learning project, which contain training code and predicting code. Uh, it's kind of a package. Uh, it also uh, includes all the dependencies, uh, not the dependencies itself, but the, the specification of, of the dependencies. Uh, so uh, you see the icon of Aristotle there. It means that that's something that the data science should uh, write. Uh, after the training process, what we obtain is an MLflow model, uh, which is another package uh, that we can run everywhere, basically. Uh, in fact, MLflow has the ability to uh, run uh, a model with just uh, a single, a single command line co uh, command. Um, then we have also the MLflow tracking server, which is basically an, an application that registers and so shows in an UI all the metrics that the training process um, sent uh, or generates. So this is very useful for data scientists because they can compare uh, how models, different versions of model um, are performing. So they can compare the precision of each model and decide which one is the one that is going to, to go to production. So I'm not going to talk about much about the uh, MLflow because uh, uh, it's too big, uh, but uh, I encourage you to visit their website. They have a pretty nice uh, documentation. So this is what uh, will replace the classical approach that Jesus, Jesus mentioned, which is, uh, of course, after having an idea and validating the idea, they should uh, write the MLflow project. Once the, the project is created, they can uh, create the family and the model uh, in the model repository that we saw. Once it is created, we can train the model. That's uh, an async task that we perform also in, in Airflow. Uh, they can also evaluate the, the model to extract some, some metrics and compare uh, with other models. And then with a simple command, they can deploy the model to production in a matter of seconds. So here's the model serving API, which is the, key, uh, the equivalent to the, the, the one that we saw for features. In this one, we are querying uh, a specific model. Uh, you see in the URL that we are uh, making a post request to a predict endpoint. Uh, to uh, a specific model that is iplored just for privacy. And then we are uh, using the default segment for that model and the uh, version 3.0. We are also sending to that model the input feature that it needs. And um, what it does is, apart from returning some uh, kind of redundant information, it's returning the prediction to us. This is a model that kind of returns a Boolean, uh, true false. So we are uh, seeing there. Uh, the probability of the response of being true or being false. They are complementary. So here's the general overview again. Um, but we added a, a new block on the left, the green one, uh, which are data scientists that uh, needs to interact with Likeion. So for that, we, did, uh, we built a simple command line tool um, so they can easily perform all the operation I, I already mentioned. So here are some examples. Uh, those are real commands of LikeCTL, which is the, the command line tool. So with a simple command, they can create a family. That, uh, 
that's, uh, that could be uh, done uh, in an instant is uh, a sync task, then they can create the model. Um, we are creating a model within the forward family with the default segment and the 1.0 version. But the important thing to notice here is, th is that we are specifying the source URL of where the ML flow project is located. This is very important. And plus, we are specifying a specific commit. Uh, again, we can have traceability because we know exactly what code uh, was used to train that model. And we also are specifying the features that the model needs that apart from for traceability documentation is pretty useful for uh, validation, vali validating some, in some places of Nikayon and also enable, enable us to uh, the, um, like, uh, uh, improve uh, the predict API so we can uh, fetch automatically the features for the user so they don't have to specify them in the request. That's something that we uh, we'll deploy, we will develop in the, in the, in the next feature. Uh, and then with a third command, they can, third and fourth command, they can train the model that uh, triggers a, a airflow job. And when it is finished, um, he will be able, or she will be able to uh, send the model to, to production with a simple comma. By the way, all the uh, airflow uh, jobs are, um, connected with the Slack, so we receive notification when a model is trained, a model failed uh, to train, to be trained, and that, can, that kind of stuff. So, conclusions. Uh, we had a pretty good acceptance by the data science team, uh, in fact, because they were part of the development process. So, uh, they were in the development process as stakeholders, so as Jesus said, it's very important that data engineering and data scientists uh, work together. Then, of course, we have a way, way, way faster time to market because once the, the ML project uh, is ready, it's a matter of minutes probably to uh, put a model in production, depending on the time that the model takes to be trained. Um, and then we have easy access to model prediction as well as, uh, as, well as easy access to features as we saw. And here you can see uh, an example of a, a feature used uh, in production. Here is the product selection screen in Cabify app. Uh, the order of the product in that screen uh, is determined by the feature that we earlier saw in the, in the Airflow uh, screen. So the product, uh, the product rank features. So that's, uh, that's one of the features that you can see uh, in this screen. And that's it. Thank you.